Hi, BPK49. Um, I hope you guys are doing well and enjoying the course so far. Uh, this video is going to show you how to measure a raw EMG signal um, with the equipment that we have. And then some of the videos uh, that will be coming up later are then going to show you how to process the data and do some frequency analysis and um, understand what's really happening at the muscle. So I'm going to first talk about the equipment that we'll be using. So we're going to be measuring EMG with three different setups. And this is so that you get an understanding of how we can change the resolution and why we, why we might want to change the resolution of the signal. And then um, I'll explain as we go and then we, I can show you how um, I change the setup and collect the data. So first we have the red board as always, and then we're going to be using the EMG sensor that we used in the last lab, the blue um, sensor to measure um, EMG signals rather than an ECG signal. Then we have our jumper wires as well. And we have the connecting cable as well. So we're going to be using the serum monitor in this lab. And so we're also going to need the USB cable and then the electrodes and the leads. So we have the same setup. The red cable goes to the uh, power, so the 3.3 volt pin. The yellow cable is going to be for this uh, input signal, and then it's connected to the A0 pin. And the ground cable, uh, or the black one, is going to be connected to the ground pin. So for this lab, we're going to be using uh, we're going to be measuring activity at the biceps brachii, and this is because this muscle is pretty isolated, so it's separated from other muscles, and we then have a low chance of picking up electrical activity from other muscles, so we get less crosstalk. So for the purpose of this experiment, it's a good muscle to use, especially if we're doing EMG for the first time. So uh, like last time, we have three electrode positions. So we have the ground or the reference electrode, which is going to be placed on part of the body with very little electrical activity. Um, this is typically like a very bony part of your body. So for me, I'm going to be using my uh, lateral malleolus, but you can use your elbow or your wrist um, or even your C7. Uh, C7. So usually the closer the reference electrode is to like the muscle that you're measuring, um, the less noise you will have, but Sometimes you might want to pick a different location because that spot is uh, like your elbow, you might move it a lot so then it doesn't work that well. So the other two electrodes are going to go on the uh, belly of the muscle. So uh, one is going to be closer to the actual um, motor center of the muscle or the innervation center. And then the other one's going to be a little bit closer to the tendons insertion. So these should be uh, two to four centimeters apart, and then they're going to be in line with your muscle. So the red lead will be placed on the electrode that's closer to the motor center, and then the white lead will be placed on the electrode that is clo closer to the tendon. And then obviously the black lead is going to be going on to the um, the reference electrode, whichever position that is for you. And so um, like last lab, you wanna make sure that you use some tape to relieve tension on the cables so that when you move, the cable isn't being tensioned. Okay, so now we're going to uh, look at the code that we're going to use and actually uh, look at some of the recordings. So if I share my screen. Well, so the first setup is like the ECG setup. So we're going to be using um, similar code that we did to that lab. So if we go to file, then examples, and we go to the basic analog read serial, then look at that, right? So this is what we had last time. It just reads the analog signal. 
So if we uh, upload that to the microcontroller, Go and look at the serial monitor. Okay, and you can see that the data is flowing in. So let's try to visualize this a little bit better. I'm going to go to serial plotter. And so you can see that this is the signal. So right now I'm not doing anything. If I flex my muscle, then you can see that the signal changes a bit. Do it again. Okay. And the problem with this is though, like it's hard to kind of tell how much it changes or, you know, what exactly is happening because the Y axis keeps changing. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually add something to the code to change that. So we're going to type in serial dot print. And then we're going to type in a string. And so these are just values that um, uh, we kind of want the y-axis range to be. So I just picked zero and 1,023 because that's, um, you know, we have zero to 1,023 values possible with the 10-bit microcontroller. Okay, and then we're just gonna move ln here and then serial dot print ln and this is just adding a line or going to it's saying um, go to a new line now okay so if we now upload this okay we look at the serial monitor and so the first column will be the emg value the second will be like the minimum y-axis or it's just like that minimum value that we picked and then the maximum value that we picked. So now when we go to the serial plotter, okay, so you can see that the y-axis isn't really changing um, and that's because we have this maximum value and this minimum value that we picked. Now if I flex, you can't really see any change, right? So that means that the resolution is, um, it's, it's poor so we need to kind of zoom in so what we'll do is we'll go back and we found that 250 to about 400 was a pretty good range so we're going to upload that now we look at the serial plotter again you just have to okay now if i go to flex you can see the you can see the EMG a little bit better. We'll go to flex. Okay. One more time. Now I'm gonna unplug this. Okay. So what we're going to look at here is we're just going to kind of look at the signal. And so you can see that the signal goes from about maybe. <laughs> 300 maybe 320 to about 280 so it's probably like 30 to 40 values that we have in terms of the amplitude um, of the signal and so um, remember, remember the microcontroller has a resolution of 10 bits so that means we can have up to 1024 values but looking at our signal um, we're only really measuring 40 values. So that means our resolution probably isn't that great. So we have a five volt system and we're only measuring about 40 values of 1024 that are possible. And um, that means that our resolution is really low. So our data won't be the best quality and we need to really change that to um, make sure we have a good quality signal, especially for EMG. So this is where the second setup will be really helpful. So uh, we know that the microcontroller has a reference voltage of five volts, which means we're going to measure between zero and five volts. 
The microcontroller also has something called an analog reference voltage. And so in the code under the void setup, we're going to add this line, analog reference external. And what that means is the microcontroller, instead of using five volts, um, it's going to use an analog voltage instead that we can actually input into the microcontroller. So if the external analog voltage was one volt, then the microcontroller would still measure 10 bits, but it would be within this new zero to one volt range instead of that zero to five volt range. However, we don't actually have an external power source, but the microcontroller has two different pins. It has the five volt and the 3.3 volt pin. So what we can do is we can just simply change the position of the red jumper wire from 3.3 volts to five volts. And then we add in another jumper wire that's gonna go from 3.3 volts to this A ref pin. And what that means is that we're saying that the analog reference voltage is going to be from, is going to be 3.3 volts. And so now we have a system that actually measures from zero to 3.3 volts instead of zero to five volts. And in that way, we can improve the resolution. So I'm going to upload this code. We're going to go to the serial plotter. Okay, we'll just wait until this spike moves. Actually, um, let's change the y-axis range because we can see that it's not actually above and below that e e EMG signal anymore. So let's say maybe from 400 to maybe 550, let's try that. Um, these values are just like values that we kind of played around with. Um, it, might, it might not work for you. You might have to do slightly above, slightly below. So just play around the, with the values and work, uh, find a, a range that works best for your signal. Okay. All right, we're just gonna wait for this big spike to go away. All right, so now um, we're, we can see the signal a little bit more clearly. If I flex now, wait to relax, flex again, relax. Okay, now I'm gonna disconnect that. So remember before, um, the amplitude is kind of about uh, 40, 30 to 40 values. Now we're gonna to check to see if maybe the amplitude changed. We are hoping for um, a bigger amplitude because we did change the resolution a bit. So if we look now, it's maybe from 460, so maybe 420 to 460. So it actually did stay about the same. Some of you might see an improvement in the signal. Um, could be that, you know, I just have a lot of noise um, uh, or maybe the electrodes are coming loose. So um, the resolution didn't change much, but it did improve a little bit and it should improve a little bit for you. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at the third setup. And with this setup, you will definitely notice a difference in the resolution. Okay, so for this last and final setup, we're gonna be using something called an ADC. So this is what it looks like. And uh, to connect the ADC to the system, you're going to need a small screwdriver. So you're going to be connecting the jumper wires from the EMG sensor um, to the ADC, and then you're going to connect the ADC to the microcontroller. So then having, rather than having the um, EMG sensor directly connected to the microcontroller, you're first going to connect to the ADC and then the microcontroller. And 
So this is the setup you'll be using for the all the experiments for this lab. And to connect the jumper wires to the ADC, um, you just take the um, jumper wire, you insert it into the back, and you use a screwdriver to then tighten. So you do that for all of them. And you want the black jumper wire to be connecting to the GND pin, the uh, red one to the VCC, and the yellow one to the AO. Great. And then once you have that set up, you just make sure everything is connected with a quick cable to the microcontroller, and then you can plug it in. And so the reason that we need the ADC is it acts as an amplifier. With the other setups that we had, um, the resolution wasn't that great, and you saw that. So we need to amplify the signal so that we can improve the resolution. So I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to be using uh, Lab3 Code 1. So this is the code that you downloaded from GitHub. Um, and here we are defining the ADC sensor. And we're going to uh, make sure there's a connection to the ADC setup, uh, ADC sensor. And then you can see here that we have a sampling frequency of 1000. And we're going to keep that sampling frequency of 1000 hertz for all the experiments. And we're going to have a baud rate of 500,000. And the reason for this is because we want to collect um, with as high sampling frequency as possible to get the best data possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this code now. Okay, I'm going to check out the serial plotter. If it cooperates. All right. So you can see that the data is actually coming in at a much faster rate now too, because the baud rate is faster. And now I contract and I relax, contract, and I relax. And one more time, contract, and I unplug. <laughs> All right. Now, um, remember last time our amplitude is about 40 values. And now you can see that the amplitude is much bigger, right? So it's at least 100 values, maybe probably more than 100 values. And you can see that the resolution is almost, it's more than doubled now. And this is going to really improve the signal and the, or the quality of our signal. And so um, as you can see, uh, the y-axis still changed around, changed a little bit. Um, so if you need to adjust these two values that we have for the range of the y-axis, then all you do is just change it so that it works for you. So now you've seen how you can actually improve the resolution. You notice that with an amplifier, the signal is much better. And um, now I can talk about the experiments a little bit more. So for each experiment, you're going to be doing isometric contractions with your elbow at 90 degrees. So you can do this, um, you can isometrically contract by pressing your palm against the underside of a table. Um, just make sure the table is like bolted into the ground. Or if you don't have something like that, you just take a towel, place it under your foot, and then grab one end and pull. And so when you are recording, I'll do an example. You're going to plug in the microcontroller, make sure the code is all uploaded. Then you're going to open up the serial monitor. Okay, and you want to make sure that um, as soon as you start recording with the serial monitor, that you don't wait too long to actually start recording. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear the output and then I'm going to contract for as hard as I can for five seconds, three, four, five. Then I'm going to unplug the microcontroller. I just select all, copy, and I can then paste it into a text file. And so that's what you do. So that would be one trial. 
And so for each trial, you're going to do that. When you have a new trial, make sure you clear the output. You plug in the microcontroller again, and then don't wait too long, maybe wait like a second and start contracting. Um, here you can see that we have those y-axis values. Um, what you're probably going to end up doing when you record is you're going to uncomment this line and you're going to make sure that, or sorry, you're going to comment this line and then you're going to uncomment these lines so that you have time in your data. Now, the reason I say to not wait too long, so like not wait more than like a few seconds before you start actually contracting your muscle when you record is because um, you can't actually record for too long because then the signal starts to lag and delay. And then the values that you get at the end aren't accurate. They're not very clear. And so then the signal um, is not good. And we think the reason for this is because communication with the USB drive um, is it fast enough. So some of the data doesn't actually get sent to the USB drive. And this is a problem because we want our data to be as clean and clear, as precise as possible. So the lag starts around 15 seconds. So as long as your recording is from like maybe 10 to 15 seconds long, you don't have to worry too much. Um, try not to go more than 20 seconds because you will notice that the signal is um, not very clean towards the end of it. So you're gonna be doing three different types of experiments. The first is gonna be an MVC, so a maximal voluntary contraction. You're going to contract as hard as you can for five seconds, and you're gonna do that three times. Then um, the next one is going to be like a relative or submaximal contraction. You're gonna do three trials with three different weights, and then um, you will be able to compare that to your MVC. Finally, Last one is a fatigue experiment. So you're going to contract as hard as you can for 10 seconds, and you're going to really try to fatigue the muscle. Um, you do have to pull up harder than you think. Um, you have to really, really try hard in order to actually fatigue the muscle. So for that 10 seconds, just try as hard as you can to really um, create as much tension as you can. So you're going to do the fatigue for three trials as well. You're going to take some rest in between trials. And then um, just remember not to record more than for more than like 15 to 20 seconds. OK, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, and you were actually able to follow along and understand like why we wanted to increase the resolution of the signal. The next few videos are going to teach you how to analyze the signal, process the signal, make it cleaner. and then. Um, You'll also see a video on how to collect data using a towel. So um, I will see you next time.